Hi folks, my name is Steve and today we are taking a look at Bot Factory. Uh, this is designed by Yoel Quinte Martins and Vital Lacerda. Lacerda you'll probably already be familiar with uh, and this game has got let's say the Lacerda fingerprints on it. Very similar to uh, Kanban but much lighter. So we're going to take a look at the game, uh, some of the basics and then dive into some of the mechanics and I'm going to tell you if it's a game that I think you should be back in or one you can pass. So this is Bot Factory. In Bot Factory we are uh, essentially working in a bot factory and we're going to be building up robots uh, and converting those robots into victory points. Uh, the game board itself is kind of broken down into four sections. So I'll kind of go over that in a moment and we'll take a little look at the sections. But this is essentially a worker placement game, right? We're going to be putting out our workers and the worker spots are all the way along the bottom of the board. And then we're um, resolving those worker actions from left to right, which is quite important. I'll talk about why why that is a little bit later. But let's have a look at the um, different actions available to you. So in this first um, section of the board here, this is where we're actually building our bots. Uh, and if we're resolving actions here, we're gonna be placing various sections of our bot. We've got head, torso, and legs. Um, and as we're placing these, we're going to be gathering up these um, speech tokens here, which uh, again, if you play Kanban, you kind of know um, a little bit about speech tokens, but these will effectively kind of augment some actions and sometimes we're going to be spending them to tag um, end game contracts and things like that. But yeah, as we're playing these out, uh, we're going to be getting various little bonuses and uh, rewards. Uh, and then whoever plays the last part of a bot is going to collect that meeple, providing they have a matching project projectile of the colour. So in this case, this yellow player played his is uh, the last um, piece of this bot, and he's got a red robot tile, so he can take a red robot meeple and place that there. And then these would be discarded, and you know the opportunity to build another red robot is there. But essentially these are going to be filling up throughout the game. There's some incentive to not completely fill in a robot because either you haven't got the matching project tiles and you just want to grab some speech marks or you want to get rid of some of these tiles that you're not going to use because they are going to lose your points at the end of the game. But that is this area there. Second area is nice and easy. Uh, quite a cool little um, system though. But this is essentially resource gathering. This is where, where the primary way that we are going to gather resources. And again, a player um, will pick a spot here. And this tells us how many action points effectively they get for this spot. Uh, and then they're going to spend those action points to either rotate the wheel or gather parts from these um, end sections here where um, where you're available to collect and you'll just track how many points you've spent and when you spent enough that's your action done so nice and simple just gathering resources really there uh, onto the third section of the board this is where we're going to be getting these projectiles this is how we're actually allowed to collect these meeples um, so again you're going to send your meeple off to one of these spots and you're going to gather um, some project tiles one or two again some bonuses you'll notice here where we've got this minus speech marked token this is just going to basically again augment some of these actions and allow us to do extra things to be more efficient uh, down the bottom section of this board um, we're able to collect these kind of wild robot parts essentially so this essentially just cancels any color it's as simple as that and that is an executive action which i'll talk a little bit more about later uh, and then this um, final fourth section is uh, our victory point section, essentially. We're going to go here and we're going to spend an amount of speech um, to either, if we look at this top section, raise the value of robots for end game scoring. So, you know, robots start at value six, but we're going to be trying to raise them up um, depending on what we think we're going to score well in. So maybe we've collected a lot of green robots. We want those scoring well. We're going to try and raise that track. Uh, and then the bottom section of this board is essentially where we're going to tag contracts. So this orange player uh, might tag this contract uh, for five points, um, which means at the end of the game, he's going to have to cash in a um, red and a blue robot to score those points. 
and again some are easier than others so this one down the bottom here just requires a green robot to tag but it's worth less points so all end game score in here essentially guys that is the game that's um that's all you need to know to play this game as well um but let's talk a little bit more about how that all kind of comes together so like i said the way that a round plays out is you're going to place your workers and resolve them from left to right so if you see if we were starting the second round now um this yellow player will be the first to move to a new location followed by the blue followed by the purple followed by the orange and then sandra would hop along to the next available spot and if you play kanban you know a little bit about sandra but if you haven't that's fine essentially she is the manager of this um this bot factory and she's essentially just gonna clog up some of those action spaces that we want to be in um, if you're on a space with her uh, you have to pay a, a one speech token premium to actually be able to do the action uh, and she's going to do some admin along the way um, filling in some uh, empty spots on boards and things like that um, but she's just a nice addition but once we've done that we're going to resolve these actions and this is super important because we're resolving left to right as well so that means if we just get rid of sandra for a second and set up a situation here if, if we take a closer look at this board now the purple player is going to resolve first but if you notice he is only or she is only available or allowed to place one um resource one bot section so that's great they could finish this row off and grab the green bot for example but as you work down this track if we look at the third spot available you can place between one and three which means you could complete a whole row if you had a um, you know three parts of the blue robot here you could actually complete that in one action let's find some legs for instance so essentially th this means that the final spot in eight each track and this works across the board as well is much more powerful but you are resolving later right and that, that's that's a really good um kind of source of contention in this game and source of angst because you often want you want to be resolving first because you know no one can get in the way of the cool thing that you want to do maybe you've got like in this case yellow desperately wants to resolve first here doesn't he because that means they can finish this robot and claim a meeple but <coughs> but the the final action on the board is just so much more powerful so you know it's balancing um being first and being greedy right you you want to you want to be in the last spot every time but um that sometimes means that people are going to take that first spot and be first to actually you know resolve their action <coughs> and take the thing you want to do right so that, that's a big part of the angst i would say um and then the rest of the game is essentially you know fairly typical typical things gathering resources the, there's some action cascading because um there are some resources if we just rotate this around if we take this yellow robot part for instance if you notice here there's an added bonus where we can spend a speech mark and you'll notice that's a recurring theme spending these speech marks to kind of augment actions and get additional actions we're going to get speech marks from um placing robot sections out as well so that would get us uh, i think one or two speech marks so we're constantly trying to kind of essentially speech marks are like another resource in this game uh, but as the game progresses you're going to be losing them and you have a maximum of nine so you are going to be you know tagging these things as the game goes on but you want to keep them to keep augmenting these actions so that's a lot of the things that you're trying to balance uh but that is the game guys it, it's fairly simple um it's nice and streamlined and smooth so let's talk about who this is for if it's right for you if you should be back in it so what i would say is straight away is this this is a really nice game it's a medium weight game it's not overly complex but there's a lot of interesting decisions you can make while you're playing um it feels like kanban you know uh and again the worker placement aspect um is kind of borrowed from kanban um and it's really cool it's it's very nice it's 
it's different to like traditional worker placements where there's an obvious place you want to be going right because there's this angst of i want to be resolving my action first but i want to get a lot out of my action so that in itself is enough to build a game around i think it's it's just really fun balancing that but then you've got this kind of uh contract board as well where you're trying to kind of work out you know um what what robots am i going to have majority in so which robots do i want to be scoring well what contracts can i fulfill that kind of thing so it's a really solid medium weight euro with that said right it's a, a lacerda game and i've heard people kind of say okay well it's it's streamlined combat yes it is or um you know it's it's a, a lacerda crunch but in you know a shorter time frame i wouldn't quite go that far right it's it feels like a lacerda game it's got the flavor of a lacerda game but it hasn't got the weight and complexity of a lacerda game and that's good and bad right it's it's good if you like that style of game um but struggle with the complexity um or don't have the time to to get those kind of games to the table um but equally you are in in kind of trimming kanban you're losing that decision tree you're you're kind of trimming the fat and making it more streamlined but you're also losing some of the um the, the like really difficult heavy decisions that you've got in games like kanban the gallerist on mars you know um so what i would say is don't immediately think that just because Lacerda's name is attached to this, it's just a, a, a very heavyweight game that's going to play quickly. Um, that I'd say that's an important distinction. And it's a little bit pedantic, but I think it's worth worth kind of being clear about because this is ultimately a medium weight game. The decisions are pretty easy to work out. That's not to say you're going to pick it up and do amazingly straight away but you know we're gathering resources we're we're building bots and we're trying to manipulate this score track um where you know lacerda games are much heavier there's much more to balance you've got many more balls in the air that you're juggling um so i think that's something that you definitely want to consider don't don't just jump to the idea that well this is going to be lacerda weight but shorter um because yeah i think that's maybe not quite true in it but that said it is a really good game it's a lot of fun uh, i think visually it's really nice i think they've done a really good job the artwork's brilliant i love it um i think the the resource wheel is nice it's kind of thematic but also um it, it works quite well in that you can't just grab exactly what you want all of the time you've got to think about you know how you're going to balance that and there's some nice kind of action cascading within that where you kind of get to heart even though you're you've just got one worker you know um you can you can kind of do some actions that cascade a little bit so you feel like you're hopping around the board even in one action and then obviously we've got sandra who's just that extra little um consideration that you've got to make all of the time because she's going to be hopping along you know she'll hop here and you've got to think right well where can i go now where is she going to get in my way is she going to foil my plans um so yeah it's really good like i say the worker placement is like top notch in this game it's really nicely done and generally the game is just a very solid um mid-weight game um i think it's already funded so what i would say is if you're on the fence you know you can always wait for retail um like i would imagine um it's not going to be the easiest game to get a retail but you know you will pick it up you will find this game um but equally i think well worth backing i i'm i'm certainly going to be picking this game up whether whether i back it or whether i kind of pre-order it you know when it's kind of close to the day i'm not quite sure yet but really good game lots of fun lots of interesting decisions well worth looking at um and yeah i'd highly recommend it but guys that's the game that's bot factory hope you enjoyed the review um let me know what you think in the comments and uh take care i'll see you next time bye bye